Hello friends, welcome back for another part of our walkthrough of Oxygen Not Included's base game. And there we go, that's why we were coming back. Uh, let's go ahead and grab our fourth duplicate here. I'm also going to mention, uh, ooh, this is actually pretty good. Uh, I'm going to take a duplicate that's going to specialize in operating, mostly because our power that's being generated right now is manual power, and I'd rather have somebody that's more dedicated to that rather than somebody that's being disrupted by it all the time. So I'm going to grab somebody that specializes in operating. If you can't get that, that's okay. Um, just get somebody and you can reassign them later if you need to. So I'm going to grab this duplicate. What I wanted to say... Oh, we also need to uh, specialize them and rename them. So let's rename Turner to... Operator... Ah, move. Turner. There. So... Um, what I was going to mention, and one of the most important pieces of advice here, is uh, do not take more duplicates than you can handle. For context, I'm only going to be taking about 16 duplicates the entire game. One of the biggest traps in this game is taking so many duplicates that you really can't continue to afford. Um, that is a very reasonable problem, because whenever the printing pod goes off, it's like, Oh, I could have another duplicate. That'll be so great. But most of the time, it's not great. <laughs> you really only want to take them if you can afford to give them enough oxygen and afford to have them uh, eating enough food. So like you're growing enough food to keep them alive. Um, I would say once you get beyond like 20 to 25, that's pretty unreasonable. You can run colonies that are like 100, but you have to be really on top of things and you have to really understand... Uh, where resources are coming from and how to manage them. So definitely not advice I would give to a newer player. So I'm going to take my fourth duplicate now like I did. I'll continue to take them up until about six. And then I'll stop for a little while until we get our food and that kind of stuff stabilized. So that's going to be the plan. The other thing that I glossed over really badly in the last video is we are building an oxygen diffuser to continue our oxygen production. So I need somebody to be, to be powering this in order for oxygen to be produced. And because of that, we are now dependent on a resource. So whenever we're dependent on a resource, I want to track it over here on the right to make sure that I don't run out. Because a very common story from a lot of uh, colonies is you basically run out of a certain resource and you won't know what to do and then the game's over. So I don't want to put anybody in that type of situation. Um, I definitely want them to uh, be able to transition onto other resources and conserve as much as we can. So yeah, uh, our, our researches have been done since we started from the last one. Like I mentioned, don't worry about the order of this yet. Just kind of get them, get all the blue ones and you can go from top to bottom if you really want to. We're not going to start needing them until a little bit later. So for now, I'm just going to clear the alerts of any new objects that I got and uh, call that good. The other thing that I wanted to mention here is uh, how many orders you're giving your duplicates at once. Like we have set up, we have a priority system so that our duplicates will be doing the things that they're good at uh, most of the time. But the thing that you can fall into a trap of is I could be like, okay, I know exactly how my whole base is going to look. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to dig all the way out here and I'm going to dig all the way out here and I'm going to dig all the way out here. And once you continue to queue up this many jobs, you're going to really lose focus on what your duplicates should be doing and your duplicates will kind of perform really inefficiently. Um, because you're giving them so many orders at once. So I'm going to advise here to just kind of keep your projects to as small of projects as you possibly can. You may need to have a couple of different projects going on at the same time, but try not to have like, I'm going to be building my water stuff over here, and I'm going to build my power stuff here, and I'm going to build my ranching here, and here's going to be where I grow my food. Like, just do one thing at a time. Um... I will give you input on generally where things make sense to go, but you don't want to like jump the gun and start building out every part of your base all at once. That's another common trap that players can get in and it really wastes a lot of time. Let me build this out here really quickly. Let me see how far over this is. That's too far. 26. So, uh, like I mentioned, all of my little sections for where I'm going to be building are going to be 26 tiles wide. It's because when you add doors on either side, that results in a room that is 96 tiles total. And there's a bunch of rooms that make sense around that size. 
There's also a lot of other setups that I like that are about that size too, so that's what I'm going to do. So now I know generally where my other ladders are going to start. And you might be tempted to start digging out this water and that kind of stuff to start getting all the pool in one place. Um, I would not waste time doing that, honestly. I would wait until it's really a nuisance and really in your way. And then when you get to that point, try to just have it drain down to somewhere else that's more out of the way. Uh, a lot of times what I will see, and even fell in this trap myself a lot, is I will be like, okay, I know I want my water to be right here and I want to capture it like that. And I want to build a ladder down in there. But this doesn't really accomplish anything. Like, this water is fine to just sit here in its natural pool. We will use up this water, and it will eventually go somewhere else. But as you're playing, you definitely want to focus on, like, what does this actually get me right now? And uh, what would be a waste of time otherwise? What I'm getting right now is basically information and carving out space. Um, so that once, when I'm digging through all this stuff, I will find food every so often, or I'll find seeds or something like that. I will need the material to continue building. And yes, the point is expansion. So like, don't be shy about expanding as far as you can. But especially this early in the game, your only real objective is to kind of get a feel for how things work. Uh, get an idea of how you like to build. And get your duplicates doing the things that they're good at. Um... So it's keeping up on your research, keeping up your digging all around the map, that kind of stuff. By the way, um, destroy this bin if you can. It's really a waste of time uh, later on to have your duplicates be running it to an arbitrary point on the map. If they need to eat somewhere and we don't have a place that's designated for them to eat yet, and there's no reason to really have this, so I just go ahead and destroy that whenever you get a second. But yeah, notice how I'm keeping my uh, list of orders pretty small here. We're continuing to expand. And uh, our first real objective here is going to be, we're going to start bumping up into getting our skills to be assigned. So for the operator that you just took, you're always going to want to put points into the things that they're interested in because it's going to help the morale go a little bit further. But eventually you will start bumping up against the ceiling of morale here. Um, so you will want to start thinking about uh, ways that you're going to mitigate that. And like I mentioned, there's going to be a bunch of different rooms that you can use to uh, help out with that. One of the easiest rooms that you could start off with is once I clear a section here, which I'll keep going on, I don't want to dig any of this out, so I want to be careful. I'll just leave the natural tiles here and we'll figure all this stuff out later. Once I kind of clear out an area and get this all uh, built out with ladders and stuff so that all the debris falls down, you can build a room here that's going to basically be like a mess hall that will eventually convert into a great hall. Which is going to be a place for them to uh, eat. That's one of the easiest ways to get a lot of morale early in the game. You do need some research that's located kind of towards the bottom here. So if you're really wanting it, you can get this research for a plant. So that you can actually have a decoration inside there. Which is a requisite of that room. And then this, which is a water cooler. Uh, you need some kind of recreation building. So those two you can rush. I'm not in a rush right now. I'm not super worried about it. And the, we're not going to start needing that morale for another handful of cycles anyway. So I'm not too worried. The other thing that I wanted to mention here is a lot of the builds that I do rely on my duplicates going to sleep and eating and all that stuff at different times of the day. So I wanted to show how I will usually manage my schedules. Let me make sure my duplicates have enough to do so they don't start idling while we're doing this. Just continue to poke out here a little bit further. There we go. And this one's going to be kind of where all the material is going to build up. So I'll just build regular floors there. There, yeah. All the material will fall down and collect here. Okay, cool. So schedules. Uh, let's talk about that. So I will usually like to have four schedules. So I'm going to add a few more. And that is so when I have all my 16 duplicates or however many I'm going to take, it's usually 16, sometimes I'll take a little bit less or a little bit more, but usually settle around there. I can split them all up so that only four of them are sleeping at the same time or eating at the same time or whatever. That can really save on how many buildings I need to have so that I don't need to have 16 bathrooms, for example. I could just have like four and then all the duplicates that are going to need to use it at the same time have their own to use, but... We do need to stagger their schedules, so the way I like to do it is I will start staggering their schedules by assigning three blocks of downtime followed by three blocks of sleep. Let me name this something like Night Sleepers, sure. 
Then I want to make sure that those blocks are covered up on the next schedule and their downtime and bedtime immediately follows it. Obviously this wraps back around. Could do it the other way too, but whatever. Morning sleepers. Sure. This is also going to be beneficial, so if you get duplicates that specialize or really like to work at certain parts of the day, you can assign them to those parts. Um, it makes it a lot easier if you have a bunch of different schedules. I'm going to also get a couple more here really quickly, so there we go. These are going to be our afternoon sleepers. And finally, our evening sleepers. We'll set up the schedule here in a sec. So yeah, if you just go down the list, whoops, I need to turn this one off. If you go down the list, they're all staggered so that they're all doing their uh, downtime and they're sleeping at different parts of the day. And then I'll just kind of arbitrarily spread them out so that they're all working at different times. This also will typically keep your power going for longer times and you won't have these like brownouts as often. Or you'll be continually making progress or if an error needs to be done, you won't need to wake somebody up to do it. Um, it's all very helpful over time. So that's definitely what I like to do. As your skills start to come in, which is going to be happening right about here, just once again, try to uh, put the skills in what they specialize in. So builder, building, miner, digging, obviously, uh, researcher. It's just going to make them perform better, especially for your miner. As soon as you get that extra skill, you can start digging through the granite here on the sides. I wouldn't start going wild with this. I would really try to mine out the temperate biome first before we get too far out there. Um, Mostly because these other biomes, you need to be attentive as far as what type of temperature they're going to be at. So if we open up our temperature overlay, this temperate bio is very green. Um, that's going to be very habitable for a lot of plants that you're going to grow, which is basically like your food is going to be safe here. As you get to these further out ones, you can see this one's quite hot. 44 Celsius in here is only like 21. Um, at this 44 areas, if you start to haphazardly dig into there and you might overheat parts of your base to the point that it's hard to grow food, um, that's going to be something you're going to want to watch out for for sure. So uh, yeah, you definitely want to mine out all the temperate zone first and then once you're, once you're stabilized in there is when you can kind of start piercing out to the other parts of the map. But for right now, we won't worry about it too much. It's probably a little bit too far actually. Okay, we've got a little bit of a space cleared. Let's go ahead and build out our uh, mess hall, which will eventually be a great hall. So once they've cleared out all these ladders too, I don't want debris to be falling in there if I don't have to. So, there we go. We will move all this, by the way. It'll probably settle somewhere more up here, but since I want to start getting the morale sooner rather than later, and just to show you what the next steps are going to be, I'm going to do this here. So... It doesn't need to be gigantic for right now, and especially since we're going to move it. Um, let's do, I don't know, something like that. Then, what we want to put in here is your mess tables. You want your water cooler if you have your research done for it. And then once again, the research, the last research you need is for some kind of decoration item. So I'll just switch my uh, focus over to here just for the sake of the video. And then your duplicates, when they eat, they'll actually just come in here and sit at one of the tables and eat there. And they'll get the bonus of the room if you have all the required stuff in there. So for a great haul, you will need the mess tables, a water cooler, and some kind of decoration item, which is why that planter is there. I'm going to go ahead and take my fifth duplicate here also. And then once we're done with that, I'm going to talk about one more thing and then probably call this video uh, uh, good for now. So uh, this duplicate, I want to take one that's going to be specializing in farming. I don't really have one that does specialize in farming here. So this one's a wooden ranching. It's kind of similar to it. It'll be nice if they can specialize in both. So I will just consider this person my farmer. There we go. And we'll print them and we will be assigning them the farming skills, which is right in front of my face. All right, so farming. Um, for farming, we want to make sure that we have the right uh, research done, which is why I encourage you to keep your research going. And the very first ones that we got were our food researches. And you want to plant something kind of maybe like this. We will revise this quite a bit, so don't worry about it too much. But you're going to want to watch out for your uh, calories here, because once you start taking on more duplicates, and if you don't start growing your own food, you're going to run out of what they gave you at the beginning of it. As you dig, you may find muck roots and that kind of stuff, and that'll help you subsist for a little while. 
but we do want to get all this farming stuff set up here and I'm also gonna say don't overdo it on the farming you don't need to have a farm that is like gigantic because if you only have a handful of duplicates you don't need that much food and one of the biggest ways that you can kind of like kneecap yourself in this game is to make way too much food and waste it meaning that you're gonna run out of your critical resources um, so yeah, that's gonna be the idea. So, I'll get these duplicates working here, we'll get all these rooms all built out, I'll probably have a great haul by then. Um, but yeah, we'll jump back into another video as soon as I have some more interesting stuff to say. Probably in the next, I don't know, five, six cycles, something like that. We'll probably be into our advanced research and getting into that. And, uh, yeah, we'll check back then. So, thanks for watching, I'll be back with another part here really soon.